Hey everybody, Chuck Barone. It is Friday, September the 29th, 2023. Say goodbye to Q3. All done in the books. Before I get rolling on the show today, as always, I want to take a second and welcome everybody to the show. And as always, thank you guys for your support. You guys showing up and watching these videos, asking your questions in the comments. Keeps us going here, man. We appreciate you guys. All right, so let's talk about these markets today. Very interesting day in the markets. Um, we had all three. Well, the stock market not liking up what's been happening, even though the, the Fed got what they're calling good news today on inflation. Um, the market started to digest this higher for longer idea. I think it's something that's going to be real. So the market's not good today. Dow down. 158 points, settling at 33,507. The S&P falling 11 points, settling at 4,288. The NASDAQ actually gaining today up 18 points, sitting at 13,219. So not a lot. I mean, quiet day on the markets. The, they're just starting to come to terms with the reality of things here. Um, you know, it's a little bit of schizophrenia because one day it's going to be good and the next day not so good. Now the markets, this third quarter, all three were down. So you had the Dow down, S&P and the NASDAQ, all three down for the third quarter. Um, let's see how they got, you know, things pick up in the fourth quarter. Consumers are hanging in there. So I don't care what anybody says. I mean, market might react to stuff like the interest rates and rumor and everything else, geopolitical, but ultimately the stock market is driven by companies' earnings, prices, earnings. Companies, even though sales are down because they've been able to raise prices like crazy, earnings still pretty good. Well, the market's holding up, but we'll see for how much longer. The bond market today falling, or actually prices up today, yields falling, but just by a little bit. The 10-year down two basis points, sitting at 4.57%. The two-year down just one basis point, 5.06%. So you got a less than 50, point inver 50 basis point inversion now really shrinking down. Um, price is high. I was reading today, BlackRock, uh, Larry Fink, and a couple others, pretty pretty respected people on Wall Street all saying that we will see the 10-year treasury above 5%. Wow, that would not be good, but it's sitting at 4.57 today, so they see the 10-year at least another 43 basis points higher. We'll see. I don't know, guys. I think that, uh, I don't, you know, things are already starting to crack throughout the economy in spite of the statistics we're reading. I'm just telling you what my eyes see. Um, now, granted, you know, here in Vegas, this town's still going pretty strong. Uh, they're winning a billion dollars a month at the tables. People lining up to buy show tickets, fancy restaurants, rooms. They've got this Formula One race coming. So the things are still okay in the economy. It's the people on the lower end, the people making less than 50000 a year, who are suffering the hardest right now and are going to continue to suffer the hardest through this stuff, but it's starting to move its way up now. We've, as I was talking about on the show the other day, 40 or was it uh, almost 20% of the people or 25% of the people making more than $100,000 a year or living paycheck to paycheck. Um, so it's working its way up through the economy now. But uh, bonds and stocks, tough markets both right now, and I don't really see much reason to feel like things are going to get better real soon and see big rallies in either one. I just don't see that coming. The dollar today was up very small, sitting at 106.18 on the index. Very strong position for the dollar. Not just, just not much competition uh, around the world with the currencies, especially the ones we compete against most. Uh, metals today with that strong dollar down, having a tough, metals had a tough month this month. Let's just face reality, guys. Gold falling another $17.70, sitting at $1,846.60 for an ounce of gold. Silver falling $0.48, cents, sitting at $22.13 for an ounce of silver. So these are now well off their highs and continuing a downtrend. You know, it's funny with inflation high, you would think that uh, precious metals would be going 
they're up, just not as much as I would assume they would be, but I'll tell you guys this, as this dollar comes back down to earth, can't run up forever, as it comes down, you'll see gold and silver rally again. Oil today down small, finally a down day for oil, down 80 cents per barrel, sitting at $90.91 for a barrel of West Texas Intermediate. Uh, still a very high price for oil, and we're all going to suffer at the pumps because of it, because we certainly already are, at least here in Las Vegas. Regular gas over five, and I was reading, they said the national average is $3.84 per, per gallon for regular, here in Vegas, 504. Wow, it's a big difference. All right, uh, oil, so oil down today. Hopefully, you know, now that everybody, the consensus that I'm hearing and reading, everybody pretty much believes that we're going to have $100 a barrel oil any minute now. I hope that's not true. I hope that's not true. But if it is, get ready for even higher prices at the pump. Uh, you know, you, Nevada will probably see $6. California might see $7. Sucks. Gas High gas prices make everybody feel angry and feel like even if everything else was great in the economy and people were making record amounts of money, high gas prices would still piss them off and be the number one thing they'd be thinking and talking about. All right, so let's talk, let's talk about these markets today, wrap this week up. Um, today's big news, the PCE inflation numbers come out. The market heralding it as great news. I just don't see it as great news. I think these numbers kind of suck. Now you guys tell me what you see. Top line, top line PCE rising to 3.5% in August, up from 3.4 in July. So another second or third month on a row with numbers coming in higher. Now that number shows 0.4% in just the last 30 days. Now they're blaming oil and gasoline prices. But even the core inflation number, okay, now that excludes energy and food, and in this thing, even housing costs, sitting at 3.9% in August. Now that was actually down from 4.2 in July. But how is the core number, 3.9, that excludes energy and food? Higher than the top line number, 3.5, which includes energy and food, which are both still continuing to go up. Interesting, interesting, doesn't make much sense to me. Um, but anyway, the numbers, I think, you know, these numbers suck. These numbers are not heading in the direction we want them to. 3.5% is still high. 3.9 is about double what their target is. Um, they're just not great, guys. And they're moving in the wrong direction again. All right. Um, I tell you guys, man, hear me. Forget this whole soft landing scenario. God. Soft landing is a unicorn. Big on myth doesn't exist. Doesn't I mean we just we've never actually pulled one off to my knowledge, but we always talk about it like somehow or another, this time's gonna be different. It isn't, guys. We got a recession coming. It's gonna be a probably not a super deep one where um you know, we're stuck. It's a 2008 scenario, but it'll be tough. It'll have, you know, it'll raise unemployment. It'll, you know, hopefully kink, get the kinks out of this on this uh, higher inflation numbers. Um, I tell you now, like I've been saying all month, even into last, you know, when they missed their chance to raise rates, uh, higher rates are called for, guys. The numbers are not going the right, right direction. And, you know, we'll, I'll get some argument and comments about this, and that's cool. I just say what my eyes see here, man. These numbers are not good numbers. And if oil goes to 100, bombs away, man. So now we're going to see if the Fed has the stones to actually raise rates again. I, you know, I thought they would raise again in September, even though the market said no and the Fed, the market, you know, was right. Um, I figured, you know what, if you're going to raise in November, why not just raise now and get ahead of everything? And now it looks like raising this month would have been a good idea because these numbers are just not great numbers. Um, that sounds, it looks to me like the Fed is a little bit reluctant to go higher with their overnight rate. Um, 
well, especially right now when the economy seems like it's going okay, I think they're afraid that if they bump it again or another couple times, that they're going to break this economy and bring that recession on. I tell you, if they don't raise rates again, these rates are so high, they're going to break the economy anyway if they keep them there for any real length of time. Um, higher, longer, just says higher till we get the recession. But if they're reluctant to raise rates now, well, inflation's hot and the economy's okay. How are they going to deal with it when the economy's stinking? When jobs are being lost, when a politician's screaming buddy murder for cuts, then what? It's just going to be fast. We're living history, guys. We get to see this and live it in real time. I just got a feeling that you know the Fed's going to start getting. They've been they've been doing a pretty man, pretty good job managing things so far. They've gotten it down from peak at nine, yikes, down into low threes or mid threes or even high threes, depending on which index you're looking at these days. And now this is getting, you know, reminds me a little of the boxing thing, right? You got the PCE, the, you got the, you know, CPI, you got all these different, you know, gauges to measure this stuff. Well, we know that the numbers just aren't great. Right? Consumers continue to spend though. Consumer spending up 0.1% for the month. Not a big number, but still continuing up where they expected it to be declining. Um, some interesting little tidbits. Of course, yesterday jobs came in 204K. They were expecting higher. The US has averaged adding 236,000 jobs per month so far this year. So the jobs going good, man, going okay. Now, this government shutdown that we've got coming has the market a little bit spooked. That was part of the reason the market went down today. What's going to be interesting about this government shutdown is all of the government statistics that we've been talking about in this show every day, that Federal Reserve uses, that everybody uses to make decisions, we're not going to be getting those reports. So no more unemployment numbers every week, no more data on CPI, PPI, PCE, no more GPI, G, you know, uh, GDP numbers. It's just going to be, I got to see how the Fed's going to manage this. Are they going to go to private numbers versus the public numbers that they get? It's just going to be interesting to see how they try to figure, you know, these keep this thing manageable without the usual plethora of statistics and data that they get. Um, we know the government shutdown's coming. I think it starts at midnight tonight. Um, Moody's, now the last of the three to rate the U.S. government AAA credit worthy, has, is warning that if this government shutdown comes, they will, won't be the last to keep us at AAA. They'll be the last to lower our credit rating. The government, man, they're... It, I would like to see their personal credit reports because they're certainly not managing the government's credit very well. Um, and if their personal credit sucks, they're in no position to be leading us in budget items for the whole government, right? Um, I was reading today another thing, and I've been talking about China and the great collapse that's underway there. It's really going to tank bad over there, guys. I've been talking about real estate, Evergrande, and Country Walk. Today I saw Evergrande, their CP, CEO, in very deep doo-doo now, man. Um, they put him under basically under a house arrest kind of a thing. In China, though, you know how that goes. That's China talk for he's going to be disappeared soon. So all of this Chinese stuff still getting worse and worse. Um, not good, guys. Not good stuff. And now they're starting to take take people out for it, man. I mean, this guy was riding high. He was one of the insiders in China. Now, well, soon to be no longer. And I was reading this other article too, talking about how the banks, US banks, all sitting on gigantic, massive losses in their reserves, reserve portfolios. I was reading to this that Bank of America has a little over $600 billion portfolio, right? sitting on losses of $105 billion in that portfolio. Oh, <laughs> that's painful, man. Anyway, guys, that's it for the week. I uh, <coughs> apologize for missing yesterday. Was under the weather and not feeling well. I'm glad I'm feeling better today. Back at it. Um, 
You everybody go now. Have a super awesome weekend. Spend some time with your friends and your family. Get away from all this government and stock market bullshit. Cheer the bills, man. We got a tough one this week. We got the Dolphins. Going to beat them, though. We're playing in Buffalo. Bills win. Anyway, guys, great weekend. We appreciate your support. We'll be back on Monday to get you primed for the next week. Until then, guys, take care. Thanks.